Welcome to Sunshine Art and Drawing. Today I'm going to be doing a video on my colouring book collection, which is on this side, and then the colouring supplies that I use, mainly pencils for colouring. Now I want to start off with these. These are a few new products that I have, um, I'm going to do some reviews for. So first of all, this is just um, the Faber-Castell watercolour pencils. They're the standard classic colour version, and what I wanted to do was a video comparing these to the aquarelle pencils which I have in a jar over here. I have done a bit of a test between them. They're pretty similar, but I will do a full review of this packet. The second thing is this is a gift that I got. Um, these are sketching pencils from Derwin Academy. I want to give these a try out, maybe draw some pictures with them, so I'll show these in an upcoming video. I haven't even opened them yet. I'm excited to open them on camera. And these I just purchased recently. They're a set of felt tip markers by Montmartre. So if these are good, um, I'm going to do a review of them, maybe get some stable ones and compare them, and see if it's worth just getting a cheaper brand. And here are the pencils that I use normally. Sorry if the jars are a bit cling clangy, and they got a bit of paint on the desk. Okay, so, probably starting from cheapest to most expensive. These are the Crayola ones. Now in this jar, um, I have the standard full length normal Crayolas, and I also have the jewel ended Crayolas, which are the one the dual sided ones like that and I just put them all in the same jar mostly jars are per brand usually just to make it easier for me to remember so these ones are all Crayola they're pretty good I kind of like Crayola they're nice and cheap you get lots of colors they're really sturdy and strong so I'd recommend those as a beginner pencil um, going by price probably my favorite pencil and that's why I have so many of them that they can barely move in this jar but these are Faber-Castell and they are classic colors so they're just their standard classic color pencils they're um, usually very very cheap so um, these are great beginner pencils I enjoy these way more than the Crayola ones I find the colors are much more vibrant and they're a lot like softer and easier to color with you can layer softly you can press hard with the Crayolas it's a bit harder to layer softly because you'll find it kind of just becomes really waxy and you can't layer colours but these are not very waxy so you can get away with layering a lot of colours and um, not getting that weird wax bloom that you get uh, going back for eyes probably these guys so these guys are Montmartre Essential Colours They the reason they're so short is because I found the pack that I got every single pencil inside was broken so every single time I sharpened it, it would break, and I'd have to sharpen and break, sharpen and break. I literally only coloured probably two colouring in pages before I just got sick of it, and they've just sat in this jar ever since. They're gorgeous, gorgeous colours. Don't get me wrong, these colours are beautiful, and they're weird, vibrant colours that you don't usually get. And they've all got kind of Oceana kind of, or natural names, like they're called Cornflower Blue, and this one's called Madame Mahogany. Uh, deep red is a standard color. Mulberry, some cute color names and really nice colors. They're just the quality is not quite there. So it could have been just the box that I got happened to get damaged in transit. I might buy some more and see if it happens again. If it does, I probably don't recommend these Montmartre ones at the moment. But they're really pretty colors. So if you've got a couple of sets of pencils and you're looking for some unusual colors that you don't have, you could try a pack of these Montmartre ones. They're quite cheap. I think they're about maybe ten dollars a pack of twenty. So I think I've got a 12 pack here, I think I maybe paid about $7 for, they weren't very expensive. Um, the next one is these guys, I'm going by price, and as you can tell I like these coffee jars. So these ones in particular, these are the Mikador Color Rush pencils, and these are also really really pretty colours. Um, they're like good quality pencils, they are, they don't have that waxy bloom. I'd probably say they're on par with these guys. I like these better, just because they're kind of like my childhood favourite. But they're on par with the quality of Faber-Castell, so I would recommend these. If you can't get Faber-Castell, or you have these locally, um, they're an Australian brand. You can get them on Amazon, I've seen them on Amazon. Now in this jar here are my watercolour pencils, that's how come it's got a little necklace on it, so I know that these are always watercolour. Um, I might separate them out because there's two sets in here. I've got um, a set of the Art Group Aquarelle Faber-Castell and also there is mixed in a set of the Derwent Ad Academy watercolour, um, their watercolour pencils. Out of the two, I like the Faber-Castell better. The Derwent Academy pencils, even just the Derwent Academy brand is weird. It doesn't seem to be the same quality as 
what you would expect from those English Derwent pencils that I remember as a kid. I remember the tins of pencils, the purple and the green tins. My sister had them when we were kids. She was really into art. Those pencils are beautiful and amazing pencils. But these kind of are lacking in some quality. And I have also the plain ones and the watercolour. And I don't know whether it's this Academy version that is kind of a bit cheaper. But they do break a lot. They're kind of a thinner pencil and they feel a bit cheaper. And I don't find myself gravitating to them because they're kind of boring standard colours. Like they're not really that interesting. So I've got these colours already in these like Faber Castells. So I don't really use these much. As you can tell most of them are just sharpened once and I'm going to use them. Um, and these are my crayons. So in here I have um, just some really old erasable crayons. And in the bottom is a bunch of oil pastels. So I keep them in the bottom because they mark everything. So if you keep them in a small jar then they won't touch everything and mark stuff. So those are all my pencils that I have at the moment. So first things first, for my books, these are the first three that I remember getting. It's Art Therapy, Colour Therapy and Creative Therapy and they're three hardcover books. I have seen more of these or similar ones to these. The Art Therapy book is more about um, like animals and really intricate drawings. Let me see if I can find one that I've done. So I like this skull. Um, I believe this one, uh, usually I write what I do it in, but I think this one might have been done in the um, Crayola, because it kind of looks like there. Like there's that waxy blue. I don't know if you can see it. It's where the paper is essentially saturated in wax and you can't put any more colour down. And there's another one that I've done. This one was done in watercolour. I think the paper got too saturated so I had to stop. Um, it's not very incredibly thick paper. This dragon one. I think I'm pretty proud of this dragon one. Um, it looks pretty cool. And there's an owl one. I think I did this one for a video. So like I have done a bunch of them. Some of them are half finished. Some of them are completed. Um, I never really finish a book before I buy another one. It's more fun to just have a bunch to work on so you've got a good choice. This is probably my favourite one. This one took me ages. I'm trying to get the skin right and um, the whole dress. I think it turned out really pretty. Pretty proud of that one. I think that was done in Faber-Castell. That's why you get the colours mixing together really well and things like that, like in the skirt. Here's one I did completely in pen. So that's all done in just ballpoint pens. I think I had a set of four or five colours and I just sat there and did different sections, different colours. I always like doing things in pen. It's a bit more like defined and the colours are a bit brighter. So if I bring that up to here, I can kind of show you a little bit what he looks like. There we go. The Harry Potter Magical Creatures book. It's from the first set of movies, not the next one, but there is one for the, the Fantastical Beasts and How to Find Them, I think it's called. There's that one I did for the, these are the, the um, Mikador Color Rush pencils, that's what I did this page in. I really like this page, I rarely do the double spread pages, but this one I just like because I like Dobby. He's sweet. So that's that one there. This is just a cheap one. There are lots of um, cheap colouring in books where they don't state who has done the art. They just kind of have a brand name on them. It's kind of disappointing. I'd like to know where the art comes from. And I'd like to believe that it's not just ripped off of Google. But you don't know really. This one's a Star Wars. This is a David Bowie colouring in book. My partner got it after David Bowie passed away. So in here I have done a couple of them. This is a really beautiful book, I recommend it. It's got stories about David Bowie in it as well as colouring in pages, which I think is quite beautiful. So I did this one here, which was quite difficult because of the skin tone. Um, I don't think I've done many more. Let's have a look. I think I may have done one. Here we go. This one here. I put glitter on it. Again, it's hard to see. There we go. So 
that there's glitter on his face because it's supposed to match the front where it's shiny. So the series of Mandela coloring in book. The reason I got it was not only for the Mandelas, but I really like color by numbers. And for some reason this book has Mandelas on one side and color by numbers on the other. And I thought as a fun project, I would try and do every color by numbers as best I could. So I've quickly flipped through the first few pages. And I was doing these in watercolor because I think it turned out nicer. It does make the paper a little wrinkled though. Grab another handful of couple of books. So it's Doctor Who book. Um, I've got a few in here. Let's have a look and see if I can find a couple that I haven't completed. I like to show you ones I've actually finished rather than ones that I'm like halfway through like this one. Um, so there's this one here. This is the one I did in these pencils, which are these um, Montmartre Essential pencils. So I did this entire artwork in these pencils. But that's how much I had to sharpen them. Like I did this one and one other, and it was just ridiculous. I got so sick of just sharpening pencils over and over. But you do get these really unique blues and reds and stuff that you don't get in other sets. So it did turn out really pretty. And then this was the probably the one that I've completed the most. It was kind of my test pad book. fan of cats so this one I also used white to highlight because it was kind of blending into the background and kind of made it look like that he was sleeping kind of on the edge of a pond and watching the little fishes that was really cute now we're getting towards the ones that I haven't really started a lot on so bear with me so I haven't started these ones um, there is one two Oh, I think I've done a little bit in this one, so I'll show you this one first. Um, this one I did watercolour for the first page. Turned out a bit messy because I tried to dry it with the hairdryer and I pushed all of the beads of water everywhere. It's what I do. I get impatient. Like this one. So I think this one turned out really well as well. I really enjoyed doing this one. This is done in um, watercolour pencil. So you sort of colour what you want to do and then use water. This one's quite... Um, an advanced book. I've got a few of those where they're very very detailed so they're going to take a little while to do. So I'll pop that one to the side. I'm just going to check. I think I've done one in this one as well. This one has a piece of cardboard and it kind of helps me know what ones I'm doing and also protects the page underneath. So that's why I've got a bit of cardboard there. So that's those two. And this one here um, is Secret Japan. Again, it's another very advanced book. They give you little cards, which I think is nice. They also give you a sheet at the back with the spreads, which means that you can sit and work out colours before you start, which is really, really handy. Like having it so that you can kind of quickly work out what colours you're going to do and what would look good. I think it's an excellent idea to include those in the back and they've got every page but these are very very advanced ones and they're also done I think by hand not computer drawn which you'll find a lot of the time you'll get computer drawn um, colouring in books but this one has been done by hand in pen and then photocopied essentially which is really pretty This one here is the day night book I showed you guys this book recently but I will just quickly flip through it I was starting on this horse and I haven't completed him but um, I wanted to kind of make him look a bit like a Pokemon like with the flamey kind of tail and pink hair but yeah I haven't really done any others of these ones these books I've only had for about a month or so so I haven't really had a time to get into those completely okay so these I showed you the cat version of this where it's um, stickers and then colouring in pages so you get to stick the stickers in. Um, at, for fun I just went through and stuck all the stickers in because that's what I do with sticker books. I think I've done that as a child. So I've done some of the pages but I have gone through and put in all the cats. 
because I thought it was kind of pointless to colour or uh, like to colour behind them and then stick the stickers on. It seemed weird to me. Wouldn't it make more sense to not have to colour that spot? My partner surprised me and he brought home the matching one, which is a dog's one. Which is gorgeous. And it's the same thing I went through and I just put all of the stickers through so there's so many puppies and dogs. But yeah, so that's that one. And probably the ones that I really like the kind of idea of and that, that I'm glad that they're doing are uh, dot to dot books. And this is my first one. So these are incredibly advanced adult books. I do not recommend these for children under the age of maybe about eight because they are the most tiny dot to dots I have ever seen. So this is page one. They have done some of the lines for you but let me put the focus on because you will not be able to see this without it. I will come up close and I'll show you this. It's ridiculous. It's just crazy. So thousands and thousands of tiny dots that you have to follow number by number and the rest of them aren't pre-drawn so you just got to figure out when number one is and go nuts it's insane like I've never seen a book this crazy I will go through and do one of these that's also the reason why I've got those fine liner pen so we have a bunch of comic book like flavored ones so I have a Thor one, Guardians of the Galaxy, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, a Captain America, Civil War, Batman Villains one, and a Wonder Woman one. Now this Wonder Woman one is gorgeous. The only problem is the one that I got wasn't quite detached at the top properly. I assume that's just for because there's thousands of them and this one didn't quite go through quality very well. Don't worry, it's not a colouring in page, that's the ones I'm looking for. So there's one there. I'm just gonna kind of flick through a little bit. Like this one's colouring and activity. A lot of the kids' books are. I think it's just because it gives them something more to do. But yeah, so you get all these different beautiful Wonder Woman colouring in pages. So that's all my collection of the comic book ones. I am going to be collecting more of these. If I see more comic book related ones, I'm going to grab them. Those are all my books. I hope you enjoyed this one. Thanks so much for watching. Have a sunshiny day.